Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today we're chatting with Ian McDonald from Bright Minds Biosciences. But before we bring Ian on, just a quick reminder to tap on that subscribe button for us. Hey Ian, welcome back to The Dive. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Thank you for joining us again. Okay, so Ian, you recently published the effectiveness of your 5-HT2C agonist BMB101 in your preclinical models of Dravet syndrome epilepsy. For those who are new to it, what is BMB101 and what can you tell us about your trial's early results? So BMB101 is a molecule that um, was discovered and invented by, by my scientists in conjunction with some external collaborators at University of North Carolina. And the compound BMB101 has application in a few different disease areas. So the first is epilepsy. These drugs are anti-epileptic agents. They help um, with various forms of epilepsy, including uh, rare childhood forms of epilepsy, such as Dravet syndrome, which uh, you mentioned a moment ago. The second area which these uh, compounds show uh, promising is psychosis. So these compounds are antipsychotic agents. They would help with um, uh, potentially disorders such as schizophrenia or what we are uh, will be most likely positioning this for, which is Alzheimer's disease psychosis. The third area, the third bucket, if you will, is addiction. Um, these compounds have shown efficacy of um, uh, treating addiction in various forms. So we have uh, tested it in nicotine addiction, which would be smoking. We have tested it in opioid use disorder. Uh, we've also tested it in binge eating disorder, which could be looked at as, as food addiction. So uh, really a broad swath of, of uh, addictions there. I think you could even extend it. We don't have data on this yet, but it would be reasonable to assume that these that this compound would have um, uh, significant potential in treating alcohol use disorder, as well as um, uh, things such as compulsive gambling behaviors. Dravet syndrome and LGS are diseases that have considerable restrictions on the current available anti-epileptic medicines. How would your present findings be a critical confirmation of human efficacy? Yeah, so are the efficacy we see in Dravet and Lennox Gasso, which is a very related uh, disorder, are quite profound. So the preclinical models for these diseases are notoriously difficult. Um, the best one that there is is called a zebrafish model, where you have this mutation in the cloned receptor, which is then put in a zebrafish. And our compounds perform extremely well in that model. Um, I would say they perform form on par with other drugs that are on the market today. Um, and the major issue with the drugs that are currently, some of the drugs that are currently on the market is not to do with efficacy. Um, they, they, they largely, they, for the most part, work. Um, one of the major issues is with safety. So uh, fenfluramine, mm -hmm. which was previously taken off the market due to issues with uh, cardiovascular safety, is um, is now used for uh, Dravet syndrome. Our drug, uh, put in simple terms, is a safer version of that. So we believe we will have uh, roughly the same efficacy, but we'll have a much safer drug that doesn't have that inherent risk of cardiotoxicity. Um, another, awesome. another issue with those compounds is desensitization to the medicine. So if you take this medicine over and over again, for a long period of time, that efficacy could wane. Our drugs, um, we believe, and, and what we've shown in, in early findings is that uh, uh, we believe that won't be the case with our compound, BMB 101. Very good. Okay, so in June, you announced your application to list on the NASDAQ. What led you to this decision? And do you believe now is the ideal time to shift to the US exchange? Any timelines you can share? Absolutely. So. Yeah, it, this this happened pretty quickly. The decision to go down to NASDAQ and uh, head to the U.S. capital markets was really borne out by the fact that most of our current investors and prospective investors 
are US based. Um, as you and your audience probably know, uh, the NASDAQ exchange is home to uh, most biotech companies and most capital that invests into biotech companies. So it was really a natural fit for us. The, uh, with respect to the timelines, I would say that that, um, that listing date is imminent. I would, um, uh, I would say that we hope to get it done uh, before the end of the month here. So we're curious, what are some of the common misconceptions regarding psychedelics and what do you believe needs to be done to improve the sentiment? Um, I'd start off by saying we've come a long way in the last few years. Uh, these medicines were stigmatized by, uh, by a drug war that didn't really look at the merit of these compounds in relation to the risks. Uh, it wasn't scientifically driven. And as we as a society have learned more and more about these uh, compounds and medicines that that stigma has largely been uh, falling away. Now, that isn't true for everyone. Uh, I think that there's a large part of the population that still holds these um, uh, that holds these medicines with a degree of, degree of skepticism, uh, but that's largely moving away. So I think that the Momentum is certainly on the side of science, and certainly on the side of um, uh, certainly on the side of uh, backing these medicines and understanding what they truly are and the impact that they can have on mental health disorders. So, I would say the heavy lifting's been done, but uh, we're we're certainly not all the way there. I, I think that that is uh, more or less inevitable, given the power of these medicines and um, the real lack of uh, there's. There's no risk of addiction with these. In fact, they are anti-addictive medicines. So uh, with respect to a lot of the dangers that you, that you would normally see with um, stigmatized drugs, such as opioids, we don't really have that, the, the major liabilities inherent in this process. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, so what separates Bright Minds from other psychedelic drug, drug development companies? So most psychedelic drug development companies are working with what nature gave them. They're working with uh, first generation compounds, with older compounds that um, didn't didn't have the uh, the the advent of modern day science when they were designing or uh, being discovered. So these compounds are less precise. I would look at them as sort of the, the first generation of the iPhone. Um, the first generation of the iPhone certainly worked, but if you were going to put that up to what we have today, it would really pale in comparison. So what we are doing is identifying exactly where those deficiencies are and room for areas of room for improvement with the first generation of psychedelics and optimizing for uh, to uh, uh, optimizing for those deficiencies. And we have. Uh, Years ago, we had uh, identified these various um, areas of deficiencies, which are uh, safety, um, trip time, and uh, some other ones, which I, I don't think we have time to get into. But um, what we are doing is designing the next generation that will accentuate the positive effects of these drugs while minimizing or eliminating the negative side effects. So. Um, when you're developing drugs, it's a lot like software. You really, uh, generally, there'll be um, one or two winners, and in, in terms of a, within a drug class, and those will really command the the uh, uh, the lion's share of the market. Um, we believe that we will our, our compounds will um, will win out at the end, and certainly. Um, certainly usurp those compounds that are currently being put forward, compounds such as psilocybin. And with that, since we're creating new molecules, we have the ability to patent those molecules at the atomic level, at patenting the actual compound, which gives us, um, which gives us pricing power. So it gives us monopoly on that compound. If you're taking forward something like psilocybin, in very short order, it will be a generic, meaning that you will be faced with um, with uh, significant pricing pressure in order, in contrast of uh, an on-patent drug, which sells for 
call it in, in the disease like depression, anywhere from ten to thirty thousand dollars per patient per year. You'd be looking at roughly four hundred dollars per patient per year for a generic. So uh, do the math on that. That is, uh, well, what uh, at, at the very low end, you're looking at probably twenty x. Uh, at the high end, you're you're looking at uh, closer to call it 60x the, uh, the the cost. So that is really um, what separates us from the competition. And within that second generation of um, the second generation of psychedelic medicine, I would say that we are the leaders. Awesome, I love it. Okay, so lastly, what are some of the major catalysts that investors should look out for with Bright Minds for the rest of the year? So we're getting into the really exciting part of a biotechnology company's life cycle, which is taking these drugs from uh, benchtop and laboratory and putting them into the clinic. So um, we will be entering human clinical trials next year with um, uh, with two drugs, uh, one for uh, one which will be used to treat, as I discussed earlier. EMB 101, which will be used to treat epilepsy, psychosis, and addiction. We'll also have a second compound, which will be psychedelic, that will treat, uh, has potential to treat depression, as well as PTSD, and a number of other disorders, which we may look to uh, later on. So in terms of catalysts, we have uh, lots of very, very impactful data coming up. We have compounds that we're um, very confident and, uh, and, and proud of uh, that we'll be entering clinics. So a catalyst rich, uh, a catalyst rich year is on the horizon, and um, I, I think it will be something for investors to pay attention to, and uh, and and the market certainly will if we um, if we do what we think we can do. Awesome, we definitely need it in these times. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Ian. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. To our viewers at home, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with more amazing content. So stay tuned by hitting that notification bell.